All right, can you see my slides? Perfect. Okay, so hello everyone, and thank you for joining Stop to Be Canada's national call. My name is Lee Rafey. I'm a senior policy and advocacy officer with Results Canada, where my work focuses on building the political will to end tuberculosis. And in this role, I'm also part of uh, Stop to Be Canada's secretariat team. So Stop to Be Canada national calls are intended to keep our network updated on our current priorities and projects and to connect with colleagues working on TV across the country. So please feel free to use the chat to connect with one another and contribute to the discussion today to get the most out of this meeting. So today's call is focused on World TV Day, which is just over one month away on March 24th. So we want to ensure that everyone working in the TV space in Canada is aware of the campaigns and the activities that are happening this World TV Day and that you know how you can get involved if you're interested. For our agenda today, we're going to start with a quick overview on the annual grassroots movement to light monuments up in red for World TV Day um, and how you can get involved in your community. Then we're going to shift to cover Stop to be Canada's World TV Day plans, including our key asks of the government in relation to our global and domestic campaigns and our strategy to engage, engage with both the public and parliamentarians in these campaigns. Then we'll pass it over to MSF to share information about their Time for Five campaign and how you can get involved with that. And then we'll open it up to hear from all of you about your plans or your organization's plans for World TV Day. So World TV Day is the big moment for us um, and everyone working in TV every year. And it's a really great opportunity to raise awareness for TV and spotlight the work that remains to eliminate this disease. It's a really important activity in Canada because as you all know, a lot of people, including the general public and even decision makers in government are not educated about the burden of TV around the world and in Canada. So the more of us who are talking about TV and posting about TV and raising awareness, the better. So every year, um, Stop to be Canada, Results Canada, and many other organizations across the country work to get landmarks and monuments across Canada to light up in red on March 24th to commemorate World TV Day and raise awareness for TV. So last year, we managed to get 45 monuments and landmarks across the country lit up in red. And with your help, we're hoping to surpass this number this year. So please consider making a request for a monument in your community to light up in red on March 24th. Results Canada has a really helpful guide that we'll share in the chat, for, which includes exactly how you can go about making a request. And this process typically takes at least a month. So we really encourage you to um, do this as soon as possible. And we'll also share a link to our living document that is tracking which landmarks and monuments have approved the request. The request. So hopefully, um, so far we have uh, about 20 monuments confirmed this year. And you can use this list also to see which monuments near you you can visit on World TV Day to take a photo and post a message about World TV Day on social media. We also encourage you to tag your member of parliament in that riding to let them know that a monument in their riding is going to be lit in red to commemorate World TV Day and that constituents in their riding care about ending TV and so should they. Um, and then one more thing for the, for the actual day, World TV Day on the 24th, there will probably be some informal meetups in cities across the country. I know that there definitely will be in Toronto and Ottawa and, and many other cities. So definitely let us know if you're interested in meeting up to take photos at a monument, um, join us in some social media campaigns, um, and we, or you can coordinate one in your city, but we're happy to support you with that. So thanks in advance for your help with this initiative. We hope to see lots of photos and media around World TV Day to raise awareness for TV and ultimately get the attention of decision makers. Feel free to tag us in your posts or use some of the hashtags for World TV Day including the theme for this year, which is hashtag yes we can and TV. 
And here on the screen, you can see a couple other hashtags that you may want to consider using to increase the reach of your posts. Stock to be Canada will also be sharing a social media toolkit with some pre-drafted tweets and graphics that you're all welcome and encouraged to use. To use. Um, we will include this toolkit in our February newsletter, so definitely keep an eye out for that. Um, and as you may know, Stop to Be Canada always works to um, focus on campaigns that are that are um, touching on both domestic and global TV. So we always have an ask of the government that's more domestic focused and one that's more globally focused as our mission as a network is to end TV here at home and abroad. So I'm going to pass it over to one of Stop to Be Canada's co-chairs, Petra Heitkamp, to run through our two main asks that we're calling on Canada to act on in support of TV elimination. So over to you, Petra. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. And um, hello, everyone. Great to see such a good turnout. Um, well, I'm putting the asks. I'm happy to talk through the asks, but I'm also very excited to so see so many people in this call. And I want to start with saying that we have some proposed asks, but really would like your input. And um, obviously, anything that we put out here can be amended and can be adapted for your local needs. So we really encourage you to actually look at what is the most important message within your neighborhood, your area, your city, your province, your territory, wherever you're working and adapt our messages so that we uh, and we would happily include your messages and your campaigns into our overall message as well. So just to bring us to the global message, we all know that in uh, last September, we had the UNHLM political declaration that was adopted um, by all heads of state in a large meeting. And um, Canada also endorsed that statement. Theresa Tam from PHAC was um, a spokesperson on behalf of the government and spoke there as well and fully endorsed um, tuberculosis. And uh, that is a really good guidance document for us to also promote here in the country, not just from a point of view that, uh, and I'll get to the domestic as, does we in Canada need to um, adhere to those as reaching the SDGs and the ending TB by 2030, but also as a way of showing our allyship to around the world. And that is, of course, something where we have been really actively campaigning together with many of our partners um, in the international development world, um, meaning many of our allies and our um, uh, NGOs, other friends and partners that we work with within the International Development Cooperation world, uh, where we had a great uh, support for the Global Fund that was announced last year. Um, we also had a great announcement during um, the, uh, what was it, the UNHLM, uh, that TB Reach got some funding. And so we do have support for TB from GAC, uh, particularly the uh, government of uh, foreign affairs and um, government in general. I think the part where we really need to be pushing more support is in the research and development area. And that is, uh, there's a lot of tools that are currently in the pipeline and we're talking about TB tools that are diagnostics. Um, and these are more diagnostics that will be available at the point of care, which we urgently need. Uh, we all know that we have gene expert machines and we, we are moving away from, uh, finally, from diagnosing tuberculosis with microscopes, but uh, we need to have much more available tests that can be actually given at the point of care in a facility such as stool test, uh, urine test, uh, sputum test, tongue swabs, any of those. So all of those need further support in, in um, uh, research as well as any of the medications. The shorter regimens are really available. We have now shorter regimens for prevention, for uh, regular TB, for drug resistant TB, but to make sure that these become cheaper and shorter and that further research really endorses this evidence, we need to advocate and we need to uh, for more funding for research and development. And of course, you all know that we are working on, we as TB community are working on vaccines. And so that's the final uh, tool, let's say, in the research and development area where we need more money. Canada has been slacking, I'm saying it a little bluntly, in terms of stepping up on funding for the research and development area. And so this is what we chose this year as um, an area to really put some messages out there on the importance of Canada to step up, not just 
globally to support global partners in the research and development area, but also in supporting the research and development groups that are based in Canada to really be supported in their funding to contribute to this global fight. So I'll pause here for a second. That is what we have as a global ask. So if you want to use a global tagline beyond, yes, we can end TB, you could do anything uh, around the area of Canada is an ally in the global fight and we thank you, or something about, yes, we can end TB, we need to step up in ensuring our support to research and development, or many other of those sub taglines where you can use the slogan. For the, if we can go to the domestic ask, um, for the domestic ask, we are working really very much on wanting to see a national TB elimination strategy. Uh, we know that for Nunavut and uh, the Northern Territories that ITK has um, a very excellent national TB elimination strategy by 2025. However, for the rest of the country, we, we do not have a TB elimination strategy. We don't have a task force. We don't have a plan. And I think this is our main ask, really, that we step up within Canada. If we want to reach these um, SDG, SDGs by 2025 and NTB, we need to get our act together. And so... Um, we have committed to ending TB, uh, but we, we don't have the tools to actually get there. And that really needs to be a collaboration between many different stakeholders, including provinces, territories, indigenous partners, TB affected communities, and various government um, mechanisms. Of course, Health Canada, PHAC, um, ITS, the uh, immigration, there's many counterparts that are crucial in ensuring that we have a countrywide elimination plan. So as taglines that, and, and, and then when we talk about a national TB elimination plan, there are uh, four or five really Im important um, components. We need improved TB screening strategies, especially among high priority groups, such as newcomers or First Nations population. We need to address the social determinants of health. And then we talk about housing or malnutrition. Uh, we, need, we need to address the access to essential medicines in, for TB treatment here in Canada. We know that uh, children in Canada no, do not have access to child-friendly medication, for example, and we need to have an improved surveillance system. Now, those are all very concrete things that you might know in your area and you feel that you have an affinity with. So please use those any of those points that you think are relevant for you to advocate around the red building that's lit up or around the activities that you're planning and put messages out that accompany the red building in terms of, yes, we can NTB in Canada, let's ensure a countrywide elimination and plan. Yes, we can NTB in Canada, we need to prevent further outbreaks. Yes, we can NTB in Canada, provide newcomers with better TB care. That gives the red building a meaning and it will help us in campaigning in general around our messages. I'm handing back to Lee to take it forward from here. Thanks so much, Petra. Maybe we'll just pause and see if anyone has any comments or questions about the asks, and then I will dive into Stop to Canada's strategy for how we're actually going to be um, sharing these messages. Does anyone have any comments or questions? Feel free to use the chat too, um, or we can come back at the end when we have a bit more time. Um, but I don't see any hands, so I'm going to move on. Okay, so those key asks are really the foundation of our advocacy campaign um, over the next little bit, especially around World TV Day. So this messaging is embedded in all of our activities, whether we're publishing op-eds, hosting webinars, posting on social media or meeting with decision makers who are trying to communicate with the public and with decision makers that Canada needs to, at a minimum, take action in these two ways to move the needle towards TB elimination and fulfill the commitments that it has made. So what is Stop to Be Canada's strategy to ensure that um, decision makers and the public are aware of our asks? First, I'll run through some of the planned activities to engage with parliamentarians. So this includes uh, engaging with members of parliament. We typically have a handful of meetings with members of parliament every year, 
to educate them about TB and ask for their support in pushing our campaigns. So we recently sent out some cold emails to a target list of MPs. And so far, we've secured two meetings in the next couple of weeks. Um, if you're interested in getting involved in this political advocacy, we would encourage you to reach out to your own member of parliament and request a meeting. Stop to be Canada can support you in developing an agenda and key talking points. Um, and we also have a template email that you can use and adapt for your outreach to your member of parliament. So we just shared that in the chat. Um, and we just ask that when you do reach out to your MP, you copy us at hello at stop to be Canada.com so we can keep track of all the outreach that is happening. Apart from meeting with MPs, we're also hosting a parliamentary reception with Results Canada in Ottawa on the morning of March 19th. So there will be limited capacity for this event, um, but I can follow up with the, the invitation for anyone who's based in Ottawa who, or interested in participating. It's another um, really great opportunity to connect with members of parliament and partners working in the space uh, in person to talk about TV. And then lastly, on the political side, we usually work with a member of parliament to make a statement in the House of Commons on World TV Day. So we'll be doing that again this year um, to really build champions in parliament and again, raise awareness for TV. So you can look out for that on social media and uh, help us in thanking them for their support. And then in terms of our public engagement strategy, Stop to be Canada sends out a monthly newsletter. If you don't already receive our newsletter, you can subscribe on our website. Um, both the February and March newsletters will be amplifying events and activities that are happening around World TV Day. So please feel free to share your events either in the session today or continue to email us if you have anything that you'd like us to amplify. We're happy to include it in our upcoming newsletters. And then we'll also be amplifying events on social media. And as I mentioned before, we will have a social media um, toolkit and campaign. We'll be sharing content from partners as well as our own content. So please engage with, with us there at Stop to be Canada. And part of this social media campaign consists of amplifying our grassroots initiative to light up monuments across the country in red, um, as we have in recent years. So we'll be sharing posts on social media of the different monuments that will be lit up and tagging members of parliament relevant to that location. So that's another great way for you to learn about what monuments are gonna be lit up and, and maybe what monuments you can visit on the 24th. We're also gonna be hosting a webinar around World TV Day to educate the public about TV and the opportunities that exist for impact this year. We do have a registration link um, that you can use for um, March 14th at 11 a.m. We'll share more information about exactly what we're gonna be talking about in this webinar in our next newsletter, but you can register now just to get it in your calendars. And then um, on the public engagement side, we're also gonna be working on op-eds and letters to the editor around World TV Day on a variety of topics around TV. And I'd really encourage everyone to take a stab at writing a letter to an editor or an op-ed to your local newspaper to really increase the reach of our awareness, um, awareness raising campaign. And Results Canada has some really great resources on our website to help you write and submit a letter to, a letter to the editor or op-ed in a local newspaper. So definitely check that out. We've shared it in the chat. And if you do get published, please let us know as we're happy to amplify that across, of, across our communications channels. And then the last piece on the public engagement, which is also kind of a political engagement and accountability tool is our TV tracker, which we'll be updating this year. And I will just pass it over to my colleague, Lena, to share a bit more about this resource. Hi everyone, uh, thanks Lee. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna talk a bit about the tracker. As Lee already said, it's um, kind of an accountability tool to um, improve accountability to um, the um, global and domestic goals uh, regarding TB elimination to which Canada has committed. So I'm just, it's, a, it's an online resource. You can, I think the link's just been shared in the chat. Um, 
And I'm just going to go through two examples, one domestic, one example of a domestic goal and one example of a global goal uh, to which Canada has agreed, but um, that we're still falling short on to actually meet the goal. So uh, yeah, next slide. Okay, so this is the example of a domestic goal, which is um, the target to um, to eliminate TB across Inuit Nunangat by 2030. And as you can see, um, so the tracker shows that we're falling short of the 2025 milestone and the 2030 target. Um, and so next slide. Um, this is an example of a global um, goal, I guess, which um, uh, which shows that Canada committed, uh, along with other, other member states at the UNHLM, to um, contribute a certain amount of their R&D funding specifically to TB. Um, and as you can see, we've been falling short of that target. And unfortunately, the gap um, that we're short, falling short by has also increased in uh, recent years. So that's alarming as well. Um, and yes, yeah, so the goal of this tracker is just to kind of track all these uh, indicators um, of goals that we've committed to and uh, look at how far we're sh falling short of them. Um, and next slide, um, I'm going to be updating this, uh, as Lee said, um, on World TV Day this year. And so if you have any feedback uh, regarding other indicators you'd like to see on the tracker or anything else, um, you're welcome to email me or Lee. Thanks. Thank you so much, Lena. Uh, it's a really valuable resource that I encourage everyone to check out if you haven't. It's also linked on our website. All right. Now... We are going to pass it over to Adam Houston of MSF to talk us through the Time for Five campaign and how you can get involved with this advocacy effort. Uh, hi there. Um, as mentioned, I'm Adam Houston. Um, great to see such turnout here uh, and also to see that we're uh, running ahead of schedule on the agenda, which is like unheard of at a Stop TV Canada meeting. Um, very excited to uh, let you know more about the Time for Five campaign, which has already been yielding results and, and which we're now um, expanding. Uh, but in order to do so, I'm actually going to uh, cede the floor to my colleague, the campaign manager uh, for this, uh, Saloni, who I believe is online, uh, coming to us all the way from uh, Berlin. So Saloni, if you're online, I'll turn over to you. Thanks, Adam, and thanks everyone uh, for this wonderful opportunity uh, to be able to bring a Time for Five campaign from MSF to all of you. I'm really, really pleased and I'm very happy to explore the potential on how we can collaborate and uh, do more actions on this together, even on World TV Day, but also otherwise, and, and pursue some uh, advocacy focusing on Canada. So um, I'm happy to start with just providing first a little context on the campaign. Uh, I believe um, as all TV veterans here in the call, you are already aware of, of the campaign and some successes that we've had at around the time of the UNHLM in September last year. Uh, the campaign is uh, so primarily focused on price reduction uh, advocacy actions uh, concerning the gene expert cartridges that are uh, produced by the company Cephid. And we are targeting not just Cephid, but also their parent corporation, Dana Hair, which mostly makes all decisions. So um, the campaign is not new. It's been going on for uh, a couple of years, since 2019. But um, the major uh, turnaround that has come uh, has been due to a lot of public pressure. And, and we're also working now with uh, um, celebrity author, activist, John Green, who's been very crucial along with his supporters to put pressure on this. Um, and we've uh, been able to create public pressure. So we have been able to get some turnaround time of six days after the launch of our campaign last year in September, when the companies announced a price drop of only one of their gene expert cartridges. There are many, many, um, but the one primary one on TV, the MTB Riff cartridge, uh, the price of that has been brought down from the price of $10 currently to $8, $7.97, um, which in itself is super significant. So in a recently um, held webinar by Global Fund, we were told that this saves them annually $32 million. 
uh, and which means that they can afford about 3.6 million additional test cartridges with this money, which is really essential for um, scaling up of testing. But um, what we are now uh, in the next stage of the campaign focusing on is this is not enough. Our ask is for dollar five because uh, MSF has done an analysis in 2019, which shows that the, the ask is very genuine. It costs the company between three and four dollars to produce one cartridge. And because the volumes have gone up, I believe this um, the price can go even further down now after COVID, et cetera. And the cost uh, with the tiered pricing is different for different cartridges for different diseases, uh, which according to our, our analysis is just an eye wash. Uh, there is no difference in, um, in the cost of production. The costs kind of level up after a certain uh, amount of volumes are reached. And um, that's what the campaign is about. So we want um, this price to be targeted and Right now, I'm here to talk about how we can come up with what, what we are planning basically for 2024 for the next phase of our campaign and how we are planning now escalation again starting March. So um, in between the context of the next ex uh, escalation that's upcoming, uh, just want to mention a note that we have from October up until January also pursued some level of bilateral advocacy with the two companies, but it's been more circular conversations and, and there have been no major results because of which we think now we want to create some more noise. So we're gearing up for that. Uh, plans are in order, uh, currently very dynamic because uh, we are syncing schedules. But overall, I think now the plan is that we want to extend the campaign narrative um, and not just, you know, uh, targeting the target companies primarily, but also engaging with policy influencers globally and regionally. So we have also come up with a regional strategy within MSF because we want to involve our missions uh, as we work in 70 countries and uh, we want to work also with the local governments to put pressure, whether it's through national TV programs, Ministry of Health, um, and also create public pressure within their own countries. Um, so currently we are targeting 15 countries within uh, MSF. We are working with our missions on that. And also how we want to bring in new policy influencers. We work with the Global Fund, we work with FIND, Unit Aid, uh, WHO, but uh, perhaps if we extend now the narrative of the of the disease spectrum, maybe we want to bring also other actors, uh, global health actors, maybe UNAIDS to uh, also bring in as you know, working on HIV and so on, USAID, Gates Foundation, etc. The other thing would be that we want to shift the focus now from TB, which was uh, purely coincidental but also to bring in more weight in the campaign with uh, the HIV and hepatitis communities uh, and talking about those expert cartridges also because these um, diseases have the next highest volumes after TB for expert cartridges. Um, and then we want to, again, now the plan is to, to start the escalation in March. Um, we are focusing mostly on um, World TB Day. And because World TB Day is, is a Sunday, we thought maybe it's good as symbolically to have a global day of action, which we are planning on 22nd March, it's a Friday. And um, here we would like to have some actions like uh, in our um, internally within MSF, our offices to have some photo op, uh, some digital actions that we synchronize, but not just with them, also with all civil society organizations that are uh, a part of the coalition. We are 150 plus civil society organizations strong and growing. So I'm here also to talk about that, how we can, uh, with your support, bring in more people in the movement. And um, also with our uh, very lovely supporters, the Nerd Fighteria, uh, who have been very crucial in this campaign. So that would be um, the just the digital actions we plan to launch with a global petition. It's in the making um, and we are ambitious about the number of sig signatures we can gather on this from each country um, using our supporter lists, but also uh, creating 
new supporters on social media. And we will also be hosting some in-person actions. We are planning a protest in DC outside Tanahir's headquarters um, with a couple of activists from uh, PIH, TAG, MSF, uh, O'Neill Institute. Um, um, then we have some student chapters around the universities, both PIH and MSF. We will be bringing in, uh, looping in those people. There is, uh, There are also some academics maybe who are joining us uh, from a symposium that's being uh, organized a day before in the area. So all that is in the making. We want to um, create good noise around that. And, um, and to get some more pressure around the petition, we'll be launching a string of actions, uh, panel discussions, live Twitter Q&As, uh, and many other such actions, launching uh, new videos on the campaign uh, to get some traction on this. And you're very welcome to join on that and, um, and, and you know, uh, just uh, uh, contribute, give feedback, or help us uh, just populate our actions. Um, then the next is, um, I wanted to talk about also how we can bring our campaign actions uh, at other key events and days of significance. So just now, as mentioned also by Petra, on um, on uh, you know the monuments, uh, lighting them up. Uh, maybe it's it's a good idea to take some also time for five collateral, which I'm very happy to share with you all, and also uh, use that around monuments to. Um, you know, just get more uh, attention on the campaign and why it's so important uh, because diagnostics are still heavily neglected in uh, cascade of care. So that would be one and, um, and not just globally, but also identify events maybe that are very, um, you know, focused, uh, Canada focused. So how, how could we do that? We are planning uh, to conclude our petition at the International AIDS Conference in July in Munich. Um, I hope to see many of you there, but before that, um, if you have any other ideas, I'm happy to collaborate uh, in separate calls and, and develop actions. And through you, as I mentioned, we want to really um, also strengthen our CSO uh, collision. So I'm happy to share some links here, which you can join our listserv, um, get in touch with me, and also on time for five resources, and uh, and and get us community voices as well. We want to add more public faces uh, to the campaign and and get voices from uh, academics, from researchers, from uh, survivors, um, everyone for the campaign. So that would be in a nutshell what we are planning to do in the next phase. And I'm happy to answer any questions and uh, and ha happy to have your feedback. Thank you so much again for the opportunity. Great, thank you so much, Saloni. Does anyone have any questions about the Time for Five campaign? You can also use the chat. If you do have links to share Saloni in the chat, um, that would be great. I can also circulate them in the follow-up email. And then as your assets are developed, if you want to share them with, with um, Stop to Be Canada, we can amplify them in newsletters and, and social media. Um, but that sounds great. Okay. So next we're going to open up for others on the call to share your plans for World TV Day. So whether you are writing an article, you're hosting an event, you're developing social media content, now's the time to share that with others working in the TV space in Canada. Um, and we'll do our best to amplify and increase the reach and impact of all of these activities. So I'm gonna open it up and stop sharing. Feel free to use the raise hand function. Hello. Hi, Nadira. Just, uh, hello, everyone. 
Thank you for all what you are doing. It's just amazing uh, that what you are sharing to fight TB and all the activities you are doing. That, uh, uh, in that context, I wanted just to share that as so for the ones who don't know me, my name is Nadira. I'm, uh, uh, I work for Kayajen. And every year, Kayajen uh, do like a special event uh, to cover the World TB Day. So we are having our annual uh, world, uh, world campaign, so World TB Day campaign. So if you want that, I can share the link for the one who want, uh, uh, would like to register to that campaign because we, will, we are sharing like uh, a very, very, very uh, uh, different content from all the world. Uh, we will uh, this year we have some specificity so we will have like the world map and for example you are able to click on each area and you will be able to to see what uh, what is happening all around the world so if we can share as well in that map you, what you are doing that would be great and if uh, i'm allowed to share the link i will be happy to share the link for the registration so thank you so much for all what you are doing and uh, yeah Nice talk. Thank you. Thank you, Nadira. Yes, please go ahead and share the link in the chat for anyone. Okay. Does anyone else have any plans for World TV Day to share? I think the uh, the McGill Annual Re TV Research Day is going to be on March 22nd. I think we have the link that Ava can share as well. Is anyone on the line from Miguel who could speak to the research day? No? Okay, we'll just share the link. Um, and then I do have one more event to share, which is Results Canada's national call on March 7th at noon. Um, Results Canada's campaign for the year is focused on reaching every child and our campaigns will be focusing on um, a variety of issues, but all within the lens of protecting children. So for, T for March, our campaign will be focused on TV and children. And we have Molly Rindamore, who's on the call, I think, right now, who's part of the Stop to be Canada Steering Committee. She is going to be presenting on pediatric TV. So you're welcome to join that call on March 7th if you're interested in learning a bit more about that. Okay, last call for any events, activities around World TV Day. If you don't have links ready um, right now to share, um, you can also email them to me and I can include them in our newsletter and on social media. Okay, so I will be following up with an email to everyone who registered for this call with the recording and all of the links um, and resources that were shared in the chat to help you all take action this World TV Day. Reach out if you have any questions and share your events. Thanks so much for joining us today and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.